Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Gina Zhang, and I am from Taiwan, on the other side of the world. Here I'll show you on a map. There's the United States, and there's Taiwan. So what is it like living in a place with affordable and high quality healthcare? What is our problem? Hospital crowding. Doctors often see over 100 patients a day. Our system is highly efficient, but patients often worry doctors don't have time to listen to what matters to them. This is a problem. Today, I want to share with you a journey of how we begin by asking, how might we create time for patients and doctors to understand problems and build solutions that matter, and the surprising story that emerged when this time is given. Two years ago, a new hospital in Taipei was getting ready to open. I had just returned from my fellowship at Stanford, where I spent a significant amount of time at the D School and BioX. Me and the hospital met, and the first patient experience innovation center is born in Taiwan. With the help of my Bay Area colleague, Tina Tuan, a veteran in design, we renovated the space with three principles. Must have window for natural lights. Must look different from the rest of the hospital. And must be easily accessible for all hospital staff. We held weekly lunch meetings with all hospital staffs to introduce how we work through a series of lectures. And then one day, something happened. A senior nurse named Yu Bo Rei came to me. She is a wound care specialist and cares for stoma patients. She has an idea that she kept for 20 years. One of her patients, Guixiang Ai, a cancer survivor, has been making ostomy bags for other patients. And unlike other ostomy bags that's in store, Guixiang Ai's customized ostomy bag is comfortable can withstand the heat and humidity in Taiwan, and most importantly, can prevent hernia. But making the bag by hand is not sustainable. Nurse Yu worries. Leveraging the resources around the hospital, I set out to seek a partner that can help us not only manufacture, but bring the bag to the next level with new fabric technology. It's there that I met Annie. Together, we listened and learned about Guixiang Ai's daily life through constructing her journey map. We listened and learned about her emotions when she spoke about the highlights and downtimes during her day. We listened and we learned. We also borrowed time from outside the hospital and joined patients wearing Guixiang Ai's ostomy bag on field trips to understand how they have fun with stoma and to make sure the element of play is essential in part of the design process. Guixiang Ai invited us to her house to show us how she works. She never showed anyone before. As we ate her homemade cake and wondered where she worked, she pulled out a stool, a trash can, a round thick cutting board, and assembled her workstation. She pulled out a sewing machine from the corner of the closet. She unfolded fabrics from her drawer, and all other materials were pulled out from here and there in the house. What's with all the hiding, I wondered. Turns out, she said she worried that the son were worried. She said her son worries that she gets too tired. Her son worries that she gets too much demand. Understandably, he was worried for her health. So to avoid the tension, Gui Xiang Ai thought she might as well hide everything from the sun. However, we know that it is because the making the ostomy bag that Gui Xiang Ai find meaning. It is through making these ostomy bags, all 3,000 and counting, helping others that is going through the same pain, living with a purpose that is how she beat cancer. We were awestruck as we learned all the secrets behind this perfect ostomy bag. A few weeks later, Annie came back with a prototype made with advanced materials that share the property of Guixiang Ai's ostomy bag. 
our group discussion was very constructive. So after a few months and several iterations later, we were ready to invite patients to test it. 12 patients are wearing them as I stand here sharing this story with you. So the whole point of this, even with a stoma, a patient should live lives that he or she wants with dignity. That's why we are doing this. And if the patient can wear it and improve the quality of their lives, business will follow. I want to return to this very first meeting when Nurse Rui and Guixiang Ai came to the Innovation Center. We took time to talk and to listen. The space is the sunshine, water, and air for this 20-year dormant idea to sprout. Had it not been this space, the idea will continue to dormant, and Guixiang Ai's secret might never come to life. It is not easy for novelty to happen in Taiwan's hospital, especially when it has no direct link to revenue. I am grateful for Fujian University Hospital is willing to take this risk and all the doctors and nurses that came along. To conclude, these are the key lessons that I have learned. Embrace the local culture, both inside and outside the hospital. Create an environment that gives time for active listening. Utilize design to bridge unmet clinical needs with technology. And together, we can innovate what matters. Thank you very much for your attention. And please note we recently changed our name to FGMI. So please visit our website and I look forward to connecting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. It's such a simple story. Yes. And of course, all I could think of when you talk about this new product, this ostomy bag, was if she had done this in a US hospital, we would be in year two of seven of yeah. product testing and like the whole regulatory, like you can't just bring a, hey, I made this at home, yeah. let's use it in the hospital. Did yeah. you have barriers like that in Taiwan? Um, for this, of course, um, we have to go through the same regulatory process, but because this actually came from the patient, and so we started by being with the patient and understand her process. And along the way, we have other partners that's looking at the regulatory because we want this to be safe mm -hmm. for sure and to benefit as many patients as possible once it become manufacturable. Yeah. But for the beginning, I think it's the, the culture in Taiwan that always brings the society together and have communities sharing values that got me to learn about this patient group. And that's how I learned about this amazing ostomy bag. And so she's, there's been 3,000 she's made? Yes. Ha, has she given those out herself to people or have you given it out no, through the hospital? So there's a wound care facility in the hospital mm -hmm. and she would volunteer, volunteer there every Thursday. So she would go and measure the patient's waist and then just go home and make the bags. Yeah. So that's how you get past the regulatory. She just did it herself. She just did it herself. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> that works until you figure out the regulatory right. and manufacturing sites. That's very, very, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Thank you for being here. Gina Jang.